Here, Bruce Bigner, and tonight we're talking about Defiance, the game and the TV series. Yeah, being somebody who being somebody who played who played in the uh, PC closed beta, um, I've got to say I I enjoyed I enjoyed the uh, the gameplay. Um, some of the artwork. Could have been done a a little bit better, uh, but but the overall the overall quality of the game was cool. Uh, the game mechanics were great. Uh, Mount Mount Tau was the was one of the one, one was one of the uh, few missions that I liked playing over and over and over again and just running around. You know, doing side quests and jumping in, you know, jumping into like the over, you know, into the pools, like where the overpasses are, and um, all that happy horse shit. Uh, yeah. wh- what's your take on it, uh, Bruce? You you played the uh, Xbox version, didn't you? Yeah, I played the Xbox version, and I had um, I had bought the Xbox version because I was hyped up about it. I hadn't seen the show yet. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just watched the, the episode number two. I think tonight is what I watched of the show. Right. And I really like. I really like the show, um, but I I cannot say. And, and let me preface this by saying I understood by getting the Xbox 360 version that the graphics were not going to be on par with a PC. So leaving all that aside. I was absolutely appalled with that game. Um, so I mean, it it may be for me coming from a more stringent first-person shooter background, but um, the to me the 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 voice. Let me just start with the voice acting. The voice acting was terrible. It was some to me some of the worst voice acting I've ever heard. It was bland, dry, just straight straight terrible voice acting um it didn't sound like the characters were into any of the lines the continuity seemed like it was all disconnected in the conversation except for the first girl you meet the first um erasient girl you meet when your pod lands her voice acting was actually good but the other voice acting it just to me was terrible um oh. I'll agree with you on that, but 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 there were some, there were actually a couple of characters that that the voice acting wasn't so bad. Bad though. Yeah, it was it was up and down. It was hit and miss with the voice acting. Um, to me, I mean, as much hype as this game had, the art was okay. Um, it was stomachable. Now, I granted this is on Xbox, but. I'm versed enough in in game production to kind of extrapolate all the information I need from just looking at, even just looking at screenshots. Um, For what they hyped this game up to be, I was expecting, you know, crisis level graphics, uh, which it was far from. Um, Now, you said you liked the game, the, the combat mechanics. I couldn't stand the combat mechanics. Um, really? Why? Why? What was? What, what turned you off to it? My gun had no recoil. Okay. Uh, none of the weapons. The the variance in the weapons was simply just particle effects and and um. No, nothing had any recoil. I had you know the third person over the shoulder mode was fine, but mm-hmm. I mean it's it's just you know if I pick up a. a large weapon. I wanted to kick a little more than the small weapon, you know what I mean? Um, it took too many shots to kill things. I mean, even with a sniper rifle, dead center headshot. Uh, yeah. I, had, I headshot yeah. almost everything. Um, you know, and I don't mind, like, when you're fighting a larger, like a larger, you know... Well, right, that's to be expected. That, yeah, you know... With the we're talking... We're talking the regular humanoid. We're talking zit, zit, zoom right in and pow. And it took me three and four sniper shots 
just to drop one mutant rifleman. Yeah, um, it should it should take two at best. Yeah, that's that's depending on where you know. depending on where 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 you're hit where where your uh, your projectile is hitting. Uh, I, yeah, I will I, I will agree that you know, that that some of the characters some of the, some of the races and such were a little um, overpowering. Yeah, I also thought the uh, um, the uh, character customization was a little too conservative. Um, you there basically had. Help. Yeah. I figure I was I was hoping for a Mass Effect level, you know, uh, at least, you know, uh, type of customization. I mean, it was basically choose from these twelve faces and these six eyes and these three skin colors or whatever it was. It, it uh, was true. You know, I didn't really have a way to make my character look the way I wanted him to look. Um, and getting back to the weapons, um, I just feel like some of the guns were nerfed. I mean, for what they were, what they were supposed to be. I mean, I'm carrying around something that was probably the equivalent to an M249, you know, heavy weapon. Right. And you just and, pick uh, it up and just going bang, bang. You're like, it's like, like it's a cork gun. Well, yeah, it's I'm dumping entire two and three clips into just to just to drop a rifleman, and I'm like, well, yeah. you know, that's that's great and all, but with the amount of repetition that this game has with the the quests, the fetch mm -hmm. like the fetch quests, I would think that they would kind of lighten up on the damage that it takes to drop an enemy, but you know. I, I was I was rocking an M two four nine and and later an energy weapon and it, it was still taking too many shots to drop stuff. Um, the uh, the vehicle that I got was of the Growler I guess which was the four wheeler. Um, Growler or was it was it uh, one of the rovers? No, it was a four wheeler. It was a quad okay. bike. Okay. Okay. Um, that thing was okay. Uh, you know, you just called it in. Um, the the um, the missions were, you know, pr pretty minimalist. You know, they were. It's it's if you're if you're into like games where you zerg, like if you're a zerger, and you like and you like basically just romping through missions and getting loot and just wash, rinse, and repeat that, then you'll love the game. You'll absolutely you like love it. like tanking? Yeah, if you, just, if you just like tanking or, you know, the kids these days, they call it zerging, which is basically just kill, heal. Loot, yeah, kill, heal, but, 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 but we remember, we remember back when it was, was tanking, back, back in the days of World of Warcraft. Yeah, oh, okay. and we played and it was fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, for for me, you know, for what they hyped the game up to be, um it 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 just to me it just turned out to be um a, a mediocre attempt at at something that, you know, and there was they, a lot of hype. Yeah, and, they I mean, there was, this was something that was I mean, well. This was something that was that was being being discussed, you know, and and being developed for over four years. Yeah, and for that long of a development cycle, I just I was expecting more, you know. Um, well, I know the fans were 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 hyped, you know, during Comic Con and, and during E three mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. And well, uh, the, oh, go ahead. Because uh, the show is excellent, you know. Even from just watching that one episode, I can tell I'm going to like the show. Um, but right. I mean, I, I'm very sp specific about things about games that I like. But even in in the first five minutes of that game, I already noted five technical things, one for each minute I was playing that I just couldn't stand. I didn't like I the guess. quality of the I didn't like the quality of the normal maps they were using. Uh, the the facial animations were absolutely terrible when the characters were talking. 
Um, sometimes the characters' mouths weren't even moving. Uh, I noticed that in the I noticed I noticed that in the PC version as well. A lot of you're you're right. A lot of facial cinematography and mocap could have been used, especially yeah. with especially with it being you know, this this supposedly being you know a mid to high end type game as far as you know graphic redundancy is concerned. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, you know some of the animations were just jerky and 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 just not smooth at all. Um, Characters would go from standing positions to running with no, you know, shift in between and and um, just some bugs. I mean, the, uh, the when I right. when I got the game, I within the first ten hours there were two instances where I simply just couldn't get on because they were doing maintenance. You know, um, right? They were getting ready for that big patch. Yeah, and so for a game that specifically is online only with nothing to keep you busy while you're offline they need to have backup servers or zerg rooms or bs missions that bs mission servers that people can go to while they're right servers or something and i agree with you on that i think i think they should put a little more forethought into this you know where as yeah it's supposed to be an online experience and everything but at the same time you should have at least some single player offline replayability value yeah, to some, it something especially for something that's going to require as much maintenance as it's going to require patch updates and whatnot uh the patch update i was waiting for um because the defiance service wasn't available um i, I think i waited two hours you know and some people, oh, that's, really? yeah, and this was, you know, granted it was like three in the morning, but I felt like playing. So, um, true. Yeah. I mean, and you would think that, um, that a game like Defiance would, you know, would have at least, you know, a data farm, uh, at least a data bad, a data backup data farm to go ahead and keep the system going on, going on. Without so much uh, as as a blip or a or, or a blurp, uh, yeah, as it, it were, it, as the main ones were rebooted. Yeah, and even so, they could even put up a disclaimer like, "Hey guys, the main servers are going to be down, um, but we, you know, that you can go to the ancillary servers and run, you know, missions you've already done. Um, you can do character customization." Um, you can watch clips from the show. You can, you know, they should have something there to, you know, when when you can't log on to the server because a patch update is being done at the main server point, then then there needs to be something there that you can log into because the game doesn't have any other way to keep you busy while you're waiting for that kind of stuff. Right. Um, getting back to the main, you know, playing the game itself, um, uh, the the character customization as far as like getting new gear um it was okay uh, i wasn't i wasn't uber impressed with it um you know buying new hats and new t-shirts and stuff is is cool you know i i prefer armors and and you know of course as you get up higher in level and as right. you play longer no, I, I like my batman underwear yeah, but you know you could get ball caps and glasses and and stuff like that. But you know there were I saw a couple guys running around in cool sets of armor and and stuff like that. So um, you know it it has some promise as far as um, you know if you're into like I said if you're into tanking or zerging or hack and slash you know wash rinse repeat noob herding. You know, kill, loot, kill, loot, kill, loot, repeat, kill, loot, kill, loot, yeah. kill, loot. You're going to love it because that's what that game is. With, um, And from what I understand, it hasn't been, you know, uh, that much crossover. Uh, I read a few articles, and I, I don't think there's going to be as much crossover between the game and the show as everybody thinks there's going to be. Um from what I've read well, in the few articles, 
mm-hmm. that there's less probably less than 25 percent crossover well i think a lot i think a lot of what's going to go on with the show is is all of these you know cool and awesome art codes they'll go ahead and I'll unlock power-ups for you and such and of course there's going to be people out there that oh well you know I've got to go ahead and have that specialty armor and stuff so I can go ahead and beat the snot out of noobs when they come on in mm-hmm. and I got to go ahead and get my stat padding in and that's something that just really turns me off you know yeah. is it, it, stat padding yeah. you know <sighs> I mean, that's, that's pretty much prevalent in every game, but I think more so in like MMO type games than anywhere yeah. else. Because if you go into a PvP room, then all those guys with padded stats got the upper hand. Yeah. Now check it out. I so got this go level into a ten PvP room, and you're just kind of like. Yeah, you, you've got level ten armor, and you walk on into a, into a level thirty room, and you're just like going like, oh shit. Yeah. Well, because you know all these guys have padded their stats, or they, you know, and it, it's it's um, this game doesn't appear to have that as much, and I'm not sure what their Yet. what their plans are for for virtual sales, but um, oh, they're there. Know, yeah, it, it, you know, when you have games like Firefall and Warframe and stuff like that, those games reward people with the biggest pocketbook. Um, you know. Those games yeah. reward not they don't reward people um, for skill or creativity in gameplay. They reward you for buying their product. You know, so well, you may be playing yeah. against somebody who's absolutely atrocious at the game, but because he spent forty or fifty or a hundred of his real dollars that he made, and you just don't feel like spending money on anything virtual, but you're ten times the player he is, he gets the hand because he's spending money inside their franchise. Right, and that's going to go ahead and help pay for the you know, the employees and the code work and the server costs and all that. And and I get that too. But I think at the same you know, but at, at the same time I also think that you know maybe for some of the noobs and or even the vets that you know are just there to, you know, play the game should be rewarded as well from time to time as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and and that that trend of of buying virtual material, you know, with real money, um, and you know, making certain things only available if you literally pay for it. Um, that trend's starting to get on my nerves a little, um, because it's it's really. I mean, I'm a hardcore gamer gamer since you know eight nine years old playing pen and paper Dungeons and Dragons so well, yeah same here I, I, I'm from the I'm from the from the D&D and uh, Palladium uh, sector yeah. myself so it's it's for me it's always been about skill and creativity and gameplay and and um, you know right. the, the the new trend is is reward the people who who simply just dump hours into the game um, and and you know, and some of them, out of their pocketbook. well, yeah, some of them don't even play that much. They're just there to go ahead and they they, they they buy shit, and they they Uber up to the point where they can't Uber up anymore. It's like okay, fine. So now every time that they log on in, they can go ahead and stop, 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 and ha ha ha! I went ahead and pwned you. You're a little noob, and then they log on out. And mm-hmm. when they need a little bit of e peening. Now they'll go on in, they'll stomp on a few more noobs, and then go ahead and walk off. Yeah. So. Yep. But, you know, as far as the TV series is concerned, you know, um, the the graphics is, are, are, are astounding. I, I love the ships. The the, yeah, the, 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 the arc ships are, 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 are way cool. Uh, I, liked, I liked the debris field. That they had in, and uh, in, in I probably might be spoiling this for you a little bit since you haven't watched the first episode yet. Um, in the opening sequence, there is a debris field around Earth, mm-hmm. and uh, you'll you'll get to see some familiar some familiar scenes from the game, as well in there. Right. 
So, uh, but you know, overall, it, it is a, it's so far you know for the power for these you know particular two episodes, um, they've definitely got my attention. You know, they they, they definitely they definitely got gone ahead and, and and got me coming back to you know, you know wanting to go ahead and watch more and and and, and uh, see you know how things are going to go on uh, on this. Yeah, the the problem I have with the uh, the series is well. The problem I have with the whole genre is, uh, it, no matter how they slice or dice it, um, this is a game that's based on a show. Now they like to say it's a, it's all one integrated franchise, but it's not. It, it, not from no. what I've read and everything that I've seen and played in the game, and from what I've been reading about production between the the physical show production houses and the game production houses they were at odds from day one the 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 filmmaker uh you know they were they were the filmmakers the production house would call the game house and be like hey um you know we're we're hoping for horses you know because we're thinking post-apocalyptic future not everybody's going to have transport there's going to be a lot of use of horses and the game makers were like nope sorry we can't do horses so it's, yeah, and I don't understand that. I mean, here you go. You you may you might have a limited budget, okay? But that doesn't stop you from going ahead and doing you know a hand. You can do a hand built uh, mocap of a horse. Uh, you could you could even go out and and get one from like 3D Buzz or mm -hmm. or, or or Daz Studios. You know, and yeah. be able to go ahead and use that with a horse model. Yep. So yeah. this I, this I whole th yeah, I, I I don't buy the whole you know oh we can't use horses, you know I think it's a bunch of crap and and they just didn't want to go ahead and deal with it. Yeah, I'm not sure what the staff was like at the game house, uh, at the game production house. From what I saw of the models, the textures. Uh -huh. Um, the environments, I, you know, it's just not the most impressive stuff I've seen. Um, for and the thing is, we don't know how long we don't know how. But and the thing is, we don't know how long it took them to go ahead and actually, you know, get uh, get get the whole ball, you know, ball rolling and everything. I mean, of course, yeah, yeah, four years in production. Okay, is that actual? Is that? TV production time. I mean, are we are we are we going to go ahead and actually see, you know, you know, two three seasons, you know, you know, with each quarter that goes by, or are we going to be like Lost Girl and oh hey, by the way guys, we're ending the the series here right now for for now, and you won't get to go ahead and see shit for a whole year. Right. See you in 2014. Right. Yeah, because yeah. it's going to take them another year to do a whole another, you know, a whole another. See, and that's that's the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing that just uh, gets me. And, and, you know, with, with with some of these shows. I mean, they're great and everything. You know, um, and yeah, I can understand budgeting and and stuff like that. Uh, but there are ways to go ahead and and better balance, better better to balance you know, balance out financially. Without having to sacrifice much of anything in production, as far as sets and makeup and stuff is concerned. Yeah, yeah. But you know, they they were they're touting this franchise, so you know, there's they've got expectations to live up to as far as getting stuff out on you know in a timely manner. And right. unfortunately. Um, we know from certain film franchises and even other game franchises that when you put a deadline on a creative project that, you know, a lot of times the end quality can suffer. Um, and for me, the, the main thing for me playing the game, uh, because the game came out before the show, um, and even though they, they want to say that the game is not a, a game based on a show, it, even though the game came out first, to me it still is. Um, the other thing is, the, the thing about that is, there was no, there was no clear indication 
of this universe that they've created. Um, there, nobody really knew anything about it, you know, of course, what we read, but um, one of the things using, when, when you, when you do something this, this grand and, and this ambitious, like it's one of the key things is to get your audience involved in the history of your universe of, that you created. Mass Effect, did right. it, they did it brilliantly because in game there's a codex. And in the codex is literally the history of the entire universe. You know, when the Krogan Wars happened, when the Solarians created the Genophage to kill to kill off Krogan well, reproduction. The thing could be said for Halo. Yeah, there's there's an established timeline. Yeah. And for Defiance, there was like bits and pieces, like, oh, there was there were arc fall events and there was a mass immigration of multiple species from two different star systems, one star system, you know, the Votans being five five species, I guess, from one, one star Six. system. Six species from one star system. Yeah. Um, those are all considered Votans, but it's, you know, it's the Arathians. The, the thing, the the yeah, I think part Arata. of it was, was there was some poor, there was some poor public relation planning as yeah. well. I mean, there should have been at least, I would say, you know, at least a paperback or two, you know, you know, two yeah, two novels, or, or or even even e-books. I mean, they, they could they, they could have gone with the e-books on it. You know, don't get me wrong. I I love beta testing, uh, beta testing, uh, defiance. I I I was on with all with all three missions. You know, and um. Well, mission plays, and Mount Tam, Tam was was the was uh, the best out of the missions myself, because you know I I liked actually you know going ahead you know running around the facilities like the medical facility, uh, going through the going through the through the uh, mountain tunnel, uh, going ahead and checking out where the the, the arc fall was uh, the, the the crash site was at and everything. And, Checking out, you know, says some of the the drop pods, uh, right, right. but but to you know to to enhance uh, the gameplay. However, you know, yeah, I would have to agree with you. You know, the the facial animation uh, could have been addressed more. Uh, the optional, you know, hey, do you want a four wheeler or do you want a quadruped, you know, type, you know, animal to go ahead and actually, you know, you know trot around on. And yeah, I think, well, I'm, and, 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 and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, um, with, with some areas, uh, the, the reason that they didn't go with horses, and, and this is just speculation, um, is, you know, the environment that uh, they were building around. And because, Climbing up some of those mountains and those hillsides was, you know, I mean, it was pretty hard just just to do it on foot alone. Yeah, I, I don't know if they were afraid that the animations were going to look silly, but they look silly in Skyrim, and people love that game. Yeah. You know? um, but you know, for me, playing the game, going back to what I said about understanding the universe, when I played mm. Mount Tam, which is one of the first things you do. Right. Um, you gotta go to Sniper Ridge and take out the snipers, and you know after that you can do a bunch of quest missions. And um, as soon as I encountered like some of the the alien species, like the first girl, you know, you encounter. Once I was out of her immediate area and I was in free roam, I wanted to pause the game and be like, okay, let me read about her species, the Arathians, right? Because she was apparently an Arathian. There was nowhere for me to go to look, hardly even online, that shows me what the history of the Arathian species is. No archives, no story of, you know, nothing in the game that, that indicated to me who the Arathians were. You know what I mean? It's beyond a cursory grunt, glance. You know what I mean? Getting mm -hmm. back to what I said about Mass Effect is Mass Effect had a, a history that was established a like thousands and thousands of years, you could read back wars that happened. You know what I mean? Um, 
when you first, you know, using Mass Effect, because it's the same type of ambitious project. You're talking multiple species in a sci-fi universe, ships and and guns and craziness and war and I mean it's an ambitious project. And, and Mass Effect being the parallel, you know, when you encounter a when I was playing Mass Effect and I encountered a Torian, I'm like, oh, that's an interesting looking, you know, species. Let me let me read about them. But I could go in right. and I could look and be like, oh, they were the third species to be invited to the Galactic Council. Uh, they've got a large fleet. They encountered humans uh, 50 years ago during the first contact war. Uh, 200 years before that, there was a Primarch that created whatever, you know what I mean? I could read back and back and back and back in their history, and it made me feel connected because now anytime I encountered one of those things, I knew what it was, what kind of what motivated it, what motivated its people, those types of things. But with this, I'm right. like, I, I don't even understand some of these people, and I'm sure this story develops as you go along, but to me, that's a mistake. When you make a game like that, and there's no proper introduction other than, oh, hey, look, we're right. alien. There should be some decent backstory. Yeah. I mean, even fact. even just even if it's just you know a paragraph or two, you know, that paragraph or two is what's going to go ahead and grab your attention. Yeah. It's it's um. You know, I I just think that they could have did. A lot better with developing, um, like you said, the backstory, the timeline. You know, a, a, an official, canonized. This is what happened. You know what I mean? With this species, this is how they came to Earth. This is how you know. Yeah, and there was there, and there was some there, you know, um, but but it was like. It's like, it's going like with with the, you know, the two main characters, uh, you know, and you know it's, it's just not enough detail. I mean, even right now, um, I'm looking at a couple of just wiki type on Erasians. We're just using I'm using the Erasians as the there's two paragraphs, if that. Mm -hmm. and, and they're, you know, handsome and naturally athletic, perceived as feral, fierce fighters. Okay, yeah, great. This this basically is a quick description of what their their personality is. I want to know about their culture, what their cities were like. I want to know uh, what kind of scientists they had. I want to know, um, you know. Uh, I want to know what wars they had among themselves and among other races. I, did they before the star they, system decided to collapse and they went on this build giant messiah quest, still like Battlestar Galactica? Yeah, well, was even before that was were they warlike with themselves? Was was there a self-inflicted nuclear winter? Um, were there you know did did they were they a spacefaring species before the Exodus? Um, you know, I want to know, like, stuff. And I don't know, maybe I'm uh, unique in that type of way. It's just me being a throwback no. rpg no. -er. But I want to know an extended timeline history of every single species that I encounter. Right. I th well, I think that's, I think that's consistent with, with, uh, with, most, with most people that, you know, that, that, are, that, you know, that have that creative instinct. No, I mean, you know, here's here's uh, here's this species. You know, they're they've come to our planet, but you know, what are they about? Who are they? Yeah. You know, what makes them tick? You know, what what you know, what's their religion based on? Uh, what was their judicial system? I mean, just tonight, you know, on the, on the second episode, we saw. You know, we saw a part of of one of their one of one of the races uh, judicial systems. You know how they punish. You know how they punish their own. The whole the whole you know the whole you know being strung on up and and having having you know the 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 others pass by and putting a rock you know, in, into the 
into the basket and you know thus going ahead and stretching them out just a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, you know, we don't know how long that's supposed to go on for. You no, know, is it for like a day, and you know, honor is been you know, has been been restored, or or you know, what goes on with that? I mean, we didn't even find out, you know, how long, you know, how long he had to be up there. I mean, for all we know, oh yeah, you know, he'll be he'll be down by lunch. He'll be able to go ahead and go home and have his peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. You know, I, and and to me, even even something like that, I want to know the history of that type of punishment. What, right. When was that enacted? Was it was a monarch that enacted that? Was there a war on their home planet that, like, you know what I mean? There, there's, there's right, so and it was. Things. It was one of their. It was one of their uh, ancient. It was one of their ancient laws. Yeah, it was one of their ancient traditions, but or, or laws. But you know, it's it's just that when you do something like this, like when you watch Babylon Five, mm. you knew, you knew the history of the Mimba, of the Minbari. Right. You know yes. Mean? You knew the. You knew the whole. That's a good example. The, yeah. The human Minbari, the human Minbari war, uh, even though the, the the humans were completely outnumbered and basically almost extinct, that the Minbari, there was a there was an unconditional surrender, to the humans. Right. Um. You know, there's just certain things when you when you start something this ambitious that, like you said, a paperback, uh, novel or or a graphic novel, or hell, even a wiki page. You know what I mean? Just and that's that's a... that's that's stuff that should have been been addressed by all, like at PAX and E3 and Comic Con. I mean, they had these venues, they had the opportunities. You know yeah. what what made them you know drop the ball on? It? I mean, did uh, just my, not my dawn on them? My my thought is they haven't really developed the races beyond what they've what it states. Um, I, I don't think there is a history yet. I think, you know, I, I think they wrote what they wrote about the races. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's an extensive history for any of them. All we really know is the voting system was a binary star system, uh -huh. and there was two habitable habitable planets, and one of those planets had a habitable moon. So you had two species that evolved on the moon, and then two on one planet, and two on the other, and then, um, you know, there was a stellar collision between those two stars, and everybody was like, "Okay, we're Audi five, and they made a mass exodus to Earth. But right. um, I don't think they really developed the story for each race beyond that. I think it's simply like, "Hey guys, I got an idea. You know, we got this binary star system, and there's these five races, and then they go to Earth." And that's like how they started see, the game. Yeah, see, and, and and I, you know, I would I would at least go ahead and you know plan around you know backstory, you know, Absolutely. and not just you know not just a collective backstory, but you know you know you could do the whole collective story, or collective story first, and have like small little sides, you know, side histories, side entries. Right. You know, involved mm -hmm. for me from each particular species. Yeah. So. Because that's stuff I want to know. You know what I mean? Yeah. And 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 I'm not um. You know, I'm I'm not. I'm not proud. You know, too proud to say if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And they've already written all this stuff. That's great. But I just from watching and playing, it just doesn't seem like they really even know. You know what I mean? This it feels like um. It feels like one of like when I used to play, you know, D and D or or riffs or whatever. One right. of those GMs that you're working, and he's kind of making the adventure up as he goes along, and he's not really he doesn't have anything pre-planned. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I feel kind of like that with this whole genre, this whole. Well, I, and as I said, you know, I, I like the gameplay. I like the game mechanics, and I even like some of the, you know, I like a good portion uh, of the environment. It's just that there's a, a lot of it that could have been refined before being placed out to launch. Uh, there yeah. could have been a lot more given, a lot more forethought to this. Uh well, it in defense of the gameplay mechanics, um, I'm very specific 
um, mm-hmm. uh, about uh, games that I play that have guns, any type of projectile weapon. Yeah, you are. Um, and I prefer I prefer um, realistic, realistic, you know, um, physics, and I prefer the bullets to arc and to be affected by wind. Well, and, that's and, that's and, well, and, well, and, yeah. And I I want recoil, and I want you know. And now, said all that to say, if you're somebody who's like, well, screw all the realism, I just want to be able to shoot stuff. Um, and you know, if well, that should be realism, that should be an I option want... in the menu. Well, yeah, I mean, if they didn't build it in, that's fine. But if you're somebody who who likes a game where it's not just overly realistic and you can just kind of like point right. and shoot. You'll love the game. You'll absolutely love the game because that's pretty much what you can do. Well, um, no, you see, and, and I'm not, and you know me, I'm not all about all about that. You know, I, I, I like you know some interaction. I like interaction with with my characters. You know, yeah. um, it gives a little bit of you know that that, that personal feng shui to it. Right. Um, well, I don't, you know, I don't but, think I don't think the game is. Is bad. No, no, no. I need to why. In the sense that, in the sense, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm opinionated, and I know that, and and I know the difference between a review and a personal opinion. Now, if I had to give a review of the game on a scale of one to ten, um, my personal feelings aside, I would give it like a six or a seven. Um, and me, and, it'd be know, be a seven or an eight. Yeah, and it's definitely not. To, for me, a nine or a ten, it's not. It just doesn't seem well developed enough. Um, right. There, there's say there are definite things lacking here. Yeah, I, I would say basic. If we throw out all my opinions of no recoil and and you know um, mm-hmm. certain things, you know that I, I just didn't like. Like I didn't like the textures they used or whatever. If we throw right. all that stuff aside and go basically on like. We both can agree that the, the the facial animations were not really very good. Um, the the um, you know the gameplay is a little repetitive. Uh, some of the technical problems with the game, the lack of true crossover between the show and the game. Yeah, yeah, that um, that, that 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 really disappointed me. I, yeah, I was just, I was just on actually that really alone, I, can, I can only give it a six or a seven. You know. Um, just on that, the, just on those few problems alone, the, and, to me, the poor voice acting. You have to me, like I said, the, the voice acting is fifty-fifty, and if the right. voice acting isn't a hundred percent, then I lose my immersive. You know, I lose being immersed in the game. It, it kind of t- it takes me out of my suspension of of, of, of disbelief. Well, and here's something. Here's something I said that kind of like you know burnt my uh, burnt my ass cheeks. Um, if you play a beta, um, and I know it doesn't happen a lot of times, but you know a good portion of the time is if you play in the beta. Well, hey, here's your copy of the game. Mm-hmm. Thanks for playing. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, it's just that it's, it's the base game. Yeah. Yeah. It. It. it yeah. Not really many people do that anymore. I mean, I alpha tested. Uh, I did. I did an alpha. I got invited for an alpha test of Battlefield Three when it came out. I did a technical mm-hmm. alpha of that, and they usually only do. Um, you know, that's like staff and family and friends. And right. I think I. I think I was on somebody's email list that used to work up there, and uh, I alpha tested that game. And I oh, I remember them. that, and I was so envious of you too. <laughs> And it was, um, I, I wasn't sure I was going to get a copy, but that didn't happen. So, I mean, for mm. betas, I'm not sure. I guess maybe if you go above and beyond and really help them figure out some problems with the game that they might hook you up. But I don't know yeah. who does that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, looking, I'm looking forward to Anomaly, too. It's, it's a new uh, RTS. It's more, more of a third-person overhead RTS type game. Um mm. And it shows a lot of promise. I mean, it's it, you know it it doesn't you know there's not a lot not a lot a lot of uh, you know hoopla, you might say I uh, over it, but 
from from the concept art and some of the gameplay that I've seen, it looks to be a fun, quirky game. Uh, closed beta keys have been been uh, sorted out and have been given out over the past like couple weeks. Um, they, hell, hell, I've even seen them on uh, Listia.com, and uh, I've been trying to get in myself. Uh, I think you should try to go ahead and, ahead and get one as well. Try to get get involved with it. It's yeah, definitely funny, a cool game. The funny thing is. Uh... Alan, a friend of my name, Alan, we, you know, well, you know, Alan, about, I would say, let's see, I'm 37 now, uh, about almost 20 years ago, Uh two decades, two decades ago, we had an idea, we had an idea for a strategy board game because we were big into risk and access and allies and uh, domination and and Fortress America. We had an idea and we had Uh the whole thing planned out. Um, for a strategy board game called Anomaly, and uh, I, you know, he he may actually still have some of the notes we wrote, but it was basically a strategy board game. Mm-hmm. Uh, the board had hex, it had hex, you know, it was a hexagonal board, you know, for movement, mm-hmm. and um, and the old Warhammer. It was basically the galaxy. the The board was a galaxy. Right, and then there was there was actually a board that was on the side that was your battle board, so uh, and then there were six races, different alien species, and you could uh-huh. invade a region of space, and if that region of space was controlled by one of the other species, then you could take to the battle board and then fight for that one area of the galaxy. Uh, and nice. Then, and then it all basically came to a head when you got to the galactic core. Um. And that's that's when you won the won the game if you took over the galactic core plus like you know it's like risk if you added up all these the numbers for each one of these areas right. of space then you know that was that was who won you know the first person to reach thirty points or whatever but we did it kind of like that and uh, it's funny now to see some of this stuff come out I'm like man I thought of that game twenty years ago <laughs> I know right I mean you know, you work on something you work on something and you're like yeah. And then just kind of like fades it back, you know. It's like it's like a in a notebook, like in your box up in the attic, and you're like, "Holy shit! I, shit, damn! I could have probably put a patent on it and you know made some bucks." Yeah, I, w- I was actually I thought about that when I saw the first advertisement for Anomaly. I was like, "Man, I should have patented that like 20 years ago." But then again, back then the patent, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could have specified computer RTS game because it didn't really exist back then, you know. Not so. true, but I mean, you could, you know, just you know, the game concept itself. Yeah, yeah, the actual concept was a, it was a, it was a strategy game based on alien species controlling chunks of the galaxy, and we called it Anomaly. It's yeah. Funny, but when I when I first when I saw that coming out, I was like, that's hilarious. Because well, I never really, I never I mean, really intended to build the game, but we, we sat. <laughs> I think one night, we sat one night and we talked about anomaly, what the rules for the game would be, mm-hmm. what species would be, what the backstories for each species were was, and uh, we talked about all that stuff and for probably a week straight. We developed the entire timeline and and all this stuff, but. Uh, Next time we talk to him, you should ask him about it. He'll he'll be a little bitter. <laughs> he'll, he'll go. He'll go into I'm just all a little buttered over there. You know, I just got done from my proctologist. You know, now nah, I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> he'll, he'll go into all the things that we've come up with, like oh, five, man. ten, and fifteen years before they actually happen. You know, stuff we had ideas for way back when. Yeah. You know, and he'll be like, everything that we've talked about, like in the past ten years, is now like. Turn it into a game or something. And I was like, that's because we have good ideas, you know. <laughs> exactly. So, well, um, you know, I, I'm looking forward. I, I've got to say, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to more and more defiance, uh, TV show wise. And yeah. you know, I, I think I'll I'll I'll, I'll definitely want to go ahead and keep an eye as far as game development is concerned, as far as what gets improved upon and 
and if there's any expansion to it right. exponentially. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm, I'm you know, sure it can get you know it, it can do nothing but get better. They're they're learning as yeah. they go because I know this is a big gamble for them. So. Oh, it is. I mean, I mean, it, it's 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 either going to be it's it's the risk versus the reward thing. Mm -hmm. That's basically what it boils down to. Was it worth the risk? Yeah. Yeah. You know. So it's basically all did it generate enough revenue? You know. Yeah. So we'll see. You know, we'll see if the fans like it. All right, well, hey guys, uh, looks like that's about it for for this particular review. Uh, any closing remarks, Bruce? I've got nothing. I'm spent. Yeah, uh, I'll just say uh, I'll just go ahead and recycle one of my old ones. Uh, learning is fundamental. It's fun. It's mental. Grab a book. And with that, we will see you next week, people.